Hello, I am Radagast at your service with True Vision of Peace and something new we're working with, which is producing little segments of information or inspiration. And we're going to call it True Vision of Peace TV or TVOP TV. And so um, the right now, our speakers will be from our own, the people who we have who have joined our gathering and are helping with humanitarian projects. And Joanne, who is with me, is one of those people who has pitched to the ambassador and has a humanitarian project. But um, with, within, this, within this family, within this group, are people of deep knowledge on a lot of subjects and information that you might find useful. And so we would like to start um, putting out, this is almost like a pilot, I'm going to tell you, uh, of True Vision of Peace TV. And um, we're bringing a nurse, Joanne with us. She's a practical nurse, um, but she's been in she's been in the field for years. And practical nurses have been in the field basically operate as registered nurses. And it's it, it the designation is really kind of um, so you know games like people like to play. If you want this title, you have to pay more. It doesn't really mean that you are not functioning at that level already. So um, I have Joanne with me, and um, so I'm the topic I have pulled Joanne here to do this uh, first episode one of True Vision of Peace TV is cholesterol. And it might sound like, oh, cholesterol, what's that? Well, I'm going to turn it over to Joanne because she had given a piece of information to our to the symposium and to the ambassador about cholesterol that many people had not, did not know. So if they didn't know it, that means lots of people don't know it. And uh, it's probably a reason why it's not talked about too much. And I think we're gonna, it, that will reveal itself as Joanne speaks. So Joanne, I'm going to turn my attention to you. And largely what I'm going to try to get you to speak on is pretty much what you had shared with the ambassador during a symposium when, we, when, the, when the subject of cholesterol and statins and, and managing cholesterol came up, and you shared some information with us that I'm quite sure most people do not know and might even find hard to believe, but it, it, real, it is the chemical facts, the medical facts, we might call it. So if you would sh you know, um, share that, you know, almost even recalling some of it, and, but being fresh. So uh, I'm going to uh, turn over this little talk to you for a moment, Joanne, and, or for as, as long as you go, because you really have some good depth to go here. And thank you for being with us. Thank you, Radagast. Thanks for having me. Um, yes, cholesterol is one of the many markers um, that you can get when you um, are given like a lab test or you, you take a physical and they're, they're testing a number of different levels in your body for different things. And cholesterol is one of these things for which they have these normal numbers for. And it seems that when you fall outside of that number, that's when the doctor wants to get you on what's called a statin or a, a cholesterol medication to um, help remove that cholesterol from your bloodstream so that your numbers are more commiserate with what they have for the normal numbers now. And um, what people don't understand is perhaps that cholesterol isn't really the, the boogeyman that it's been made out to be. Um, they have all sorts of um, subsets like HDL, LDL, what's the good cholesterol, what's the bad cholesterol, and it, it really becomes kind of a scary thing to try to understand for people. And so what they just kind of do is go, oh, well, my doctor said my numbers are high and that's not good and I could die of a heart attack or, and, and, you know, cardiac problems and all this. I better go on this, this um, cholesterol medication to, to get rid of my cholesterol. And cholesterol medications, which are the statins, they, they're very good at removing the cholesterol from your bloodstream. And so when you go back to your doctor and your numbers are lower and they look better, you get very congratulated and good job taking your medications. But what people aren't realizing is that cholesterol plays a role. It plays a very important role. Your body in its innate intelligence is producing that cholesterol for a reason. And the pharmaceutical industry has been successful in calling that cholesterol the villain or the bad thing. And people are only seeing that side of it. But cholesterol, when you think about it, it's kind of a very slippery, lubricating substance that it, it serves a, like a lubrication for a lot of your bodily functions. And one of the main ones is when your body starts to become more acidic, 
you've got the acid alkaline balance that your body needs to stay within. And because of your diet, your lifestyle choices, um, things that you're exposed to, your body can tend to become more acidic very easily in the environments that we have now and the foods that we eat. And so what your body will do is purposely um, manufacture more cholesterol because if you have an acidity going on in, within your bloodstream, um, the inner part of your, your veins and your arteries, the, the inner walls are very sensitive mm -hmm. to any kind of acid environment. And so what your body does is purposely um, produces this cholesterol to lubricate the lining inside of, of your blood vessels. And, and that is a protective measure for you. And so if your number is a little bit higher than what the doctor thinks it should be, uh, he, he's going to try to take that number down, in effect, get rid of your cholesterol out of your bloodstream. And that cholesterol is actually trying to protect you. And so now that's leaving you open um, for the damage to your arteries um, because of the inflammation. And what happens is when cholesterol and inflammation meet together, that is where the damage starts. That's where the stickiness and the clumping and that starts is because of that inflammation um, that is on those walls. And so what you really want to do is eliminate um, inflammation causing things in your, from your diet and your lifestyle. And the cholesterol is completely harmless. And, is, and not only is it harmless, but it's actually very helpful in what it does to maintain the integrity of your blood vessels, um, the functioning of your brain, um, and many other things in your body. And what the doctors don't realize, um, or they realize and fail to mention to patients, is that when you take a statin drug that strips the cholesterol out of your bloodstream, you are also stripping out what is called coenzyme Q10, and they call it CoQ10 for short. It's also called ubiquinol and ubiquinone. And that is stripped completely out um, with the statin drug, and that sets you up for a whole range of problems with your nerves and with your muscle systems. And you can start getting things like peripheral, peripheral neuropathy and all kinds of muscle problems and nerve problems um, that you never had before. Um, the doctors that don't tell the patients that this statin drug will also strip CoQ10 from your system, um, that's just criminal. They, they should not be setting people up to be taking a product that not only strips the cholesterol, the, the cholesterol that's trying to protect you, stripping that out as well as stripping out your CoQ10 at the same time. And most patients are not put on supplemental CoQ10 when they're put on a cholesterol medication. And so begins what I call the hamster wheel of now you have more things wrong and you need more medications for that and which causes more things to go wrong and you need more medications for that and you get on this roller coaster that's really hard to get off. And statins has been one of the drugs that really puts people on that roller coaster. Well, what you said really brought up a lot of thoughts for me. Uh, interesting enough, the way you um, spoke about acidity in the bloodstream and how the um, cholesterol can help be a buffer against that acidity. And right away, I thought of like if I had a little cut on my finger and I was working with lemons, that acid would sting my cut, which it wouldn't do on, on regular intact skin. But if I were to take chapstick, a little oil, a little beeswax, some kind of fatty substance, put it over my cut, and then went back to the lemon, the lemon would, that, that fat would protect that, that delicate skin and actually acts as an insulator. So in many, so in many ways, I see cholesterol acting almost like a balm for, you know, when, when, when acid is starting to wear down the interior of the, of the cell walls of the veins or arteries, and they're now starting to get a little chapped almost or something. So you need a little chapstick and cholesterol can almost act like a chapstick there. And then similarly, um, Something uh, for this might be a little bit more anatomy that a lot of people know, but all nerves have fat along them. It's called the myelin sheath. And if I'm correct, um, isn't multiple sclerosis a, a, a degradation of the myelin sheath? That is, and there's a lot of things that happen because of myelin sheath degradation. Um, a big one is the protection in your brain mm -hmm. isn't there when you're on stand and if you take a look at the 
increased um, occurrence of Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and other things like that. Um, a large part of that is because these patients have been on stantons for a number of years and that really de degraded the myelin sheath in their brains and they don't have the protection anymore and that shows up as Alzheimer's. So, so there's a lot of diseases, disorders, dysfunctions and disabilities that can come, that can stem just from taking statin drugs. That's fascinating. Uh, so I think one, and to me, one of the almost, I mean, it, I mean, I don't want to use the word criminal because it almost brings up the legal system and we, I don't want to deal with them at all. But this, the misrepresentation of cholesterol, something our body produces, just like it produces white corpuscles, like it produces red blood cells. I mean, it produces cholesterol, this, this kind of free fatty thing. And, it, and to interfere with that production can really interfere with homeostasis and normal body function and produce some, I mean, muscular dis, uh, multiple sclerosis is, no, is, is a really debilitating condition and um, so is Alzheimer's. And one can see how, how without all these fatty protection of our nerve tissue, with it being broken down because of the statins in our bloodstream, how we are just rip, pulling apart and dissolving all this protection that our bodies work so hard, our liver works so hard to produce in the first place. So you can, and then when you look at the cascade of effects, what you call the hamster wheel, the roller coaster, you, it almost looks like a setup. Almost like a marketing thing, like in other words, where if if you come in with cholesterol, you've been told the first setup was that you were told that, that your own cholesterol is bad for you, so you must take this drug. And then when certain things start to break down, you will have other symptoms, and of course there are drugs for those symptoms. And, and as those drugs get added, there's a chance of more symptoms, and then you just start, as you said, that 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 hamster wheel of more and more medications. Where when you go to people who have been who started years ago on statins and now now you look in the medicine cabinet i mean the medicine cabinet is filled with their daily medications and um we have to question the health impact of all of that interfering with the body's normal chemistry i mean as if i mean doctors to me act as if god got things wrong exactly it's been it was very clever um to market cholesterol as the villain and you know fear campaigns are very very successful um to get somebody afraid of something and to start telling them the bad things that are going to happen to them because of this bad thing is a is a very lucrative way to do business and when you talked about the um production of cholesterol um what stanton's also does is doesn't necessarily stop the production of cholesterol your body will keep producing and producing and producing, and that statin drug will keep stripping it out of the bloodstream and stripping it out and taking it away and taking it away. So the production aspect is still there. It doesn't stop you from producing it, but it's, it takes it away once it's produced. And so you will have this liver and these, these other bodily systems that keep contributing to this process that are just exhausting themselves because they're still trying to take care of the original problem. Mm -hmm. And you're taking away what it is that they're doing to take care of that problem. And they just keep working harder and harder to do it. And the drugs keep stripping it and stripping it and stripping it away. And pretty soon these organs are going to conk out from exhaustion. Mm -hmm. And you're going to start seeing ramifications because of that as well. Um, so making cholesterol the boogeyman and getting people afraid of it and getting them to start on this medication creates a whole cascade of other things. Um, that end up kind of creating customers for the system. Mm -hmm. Well, I would like, I guess I would, what I would like to say, and I guess kind of almost like as a disclaimer of sorts, is that we bring this information for people to be, to have the, all the, the, some data, data that they might not get from the medical industry for, because it's kind of counter their interests. Uh, this is not meant to tell people if you're, we're not necessarily telling people if you're on statin drugs, don't take them because that's a decision they personally have to make. But what we're doing is giving people information to kind of fill out the data sheet that they have so they can make an informed decision. And, um, and I might, I guess I might counsel that this informed decision might not be able to be made with the, with the counsel of your doctor. 
um, it, it, it might not be some information that they would resonate with. But I really feel that if we're going to speak as an empowered people, if we're going to really be rising and being in our own integrity, we have to listen to the counsel of the experts, but finally, at the end of the day, hold our own counsel. And should, and should the decision be a poor one, well, then we will have the consequences of our own decision, but it'll be our decision. There'll be nobody to blame. And I, but I just, I just thought that this information about cholesterol would just maybe make people feel uh, a little more comfortable, especially those people who might be at a, at, a, at a cholesterol level. They're kind of maybe thinking, oh, I don't know if I want to, and maybe it'll help them relax and not think that they're fighting their health or they're doing something detrimental for their health by not taking a statin. Um, of course, I, to preface this, we hope that everybody's eating a healthy diet you know, a good balance of things. I'm not going to say whether it should be vegetarian or non meat or whatever, but quality food, you know, organic vegetation, hopefully very well raised. If you, if you're going to go for animal food, well raised animal food, well fed. Um, and so a, a really healthy diet because uh, obviously if somebody's living at McDonald's um, or other fast food, processed food places, they're going to have, you know, the, the, there's just become, it, it's harder for them, I feel, for them to sit in and kind of understand where their body's coming from because they might be getting signals from their diet that have nothing to do with homeostasis per se or, or what health they could have if they were eating a, a nice, healthy, balanced diet. Correct. The, the cholesterol in your system doesn't so much come from the McDonald's that you're eating or the, the boxed food that you're bringing home from the grocery store um, or the eggs or whatever, the cholesterol comes as a response to you eating the McDonald's and that McDonald's food is creating that acidity and that inflammation in your body and therefore the response of your body is to produce more cholesterol to protect you. And so there might have been a little bit of a mix up here by saying, well, if you eat a lot of this particular food that's got a lot of cholesterol in it, so you're going to get a lot of cholesterol. Well, it's not coming from the dietary food. It's coming from your body as a response to the, the inflammation that that food is causing. Mm. And so addressing your diet, addressing the toxins, the chemicals in your diet is really the first step in making sure that your cholesterol is a healthy cholesterol. Now, an interesting thing, I guess we're, well, I'm going to get a little scientific here. Um, let's take something that's considered high in cholesterol naturally, like the egg. The egg, especially because of the yolk, I mean, it's going to turn into a, a, some, a, an animal. So it's really rich in fat. There's no question about that it's rich in cholesterol. But if I recall correctly, eggs are also high in something called lecithin. And to my knowledge, lecithin is an emulsifier. And what an, emul an emulsifier is something Less that, beg your pardon? Okay. Lecithin? Oh, lecithin. Yeah, I was, I know the H is there. I was just pronouncing it without, you know, without sounding the H. So lecithin. And from what I know of. Okay, that, awesome. Why the egg is considered almost a perfect food is even though it ha it's very fatty, it also comes with lecithin. And, it, and, and lecithin is an emulsifier. Basically, for people who don't know what an emulsifier is, if you had a greasy pot and you're, you could use all the water you want and it still stays greasy, you take a little bit of dish detergent and it'll just, it'll just kind of convert the fat. It'll break it up in a way that now it can mix with water. Actually, an emulsifier is a way to mix fat in water because generally an emulsifier has lipophilic or fat-loving parts of its molecule and hydrophilic or water-loving parts of its molecule. So fat and water, which usually don't bond together, now have a common molecule and they kind of bond on one side and one side and you can, so fat and water can mix. And it also makes the fat to move, it makes it more, uh, less viscous and more mobile. So something that might be a little thick and unmovable with the lecithin, now it becomes a lot more mobile. It still has all the rich fatty quality it wants, but it's, it's not like lard. It's more like a vegetable oil. And um, so, so there's a case of, of, of an egg being called a perfect food. So let me ask you, do statins work like an emulsifier or they, or they act more like almost like an alcohol where they just break down the fat? I don't know the exact molecular um, action of the statins. It's just that they 
they take the existing cholesterol that is in the bloodstream and remove it. Hmm. And if you want to get more technical, that, you know, we can we can break that down and we can find that out and report on it. Okay. Well, I was trying to keep but, it. But sorry, man, I was trying to keep it a little, just a, a little bit above conversational English because I want this. I want this to be available for for everybody really to um, to speak on. And even speaking of emulsifiers and lecithin, might have been taking it up a little bit. But I do. I want to take it just a little bit above conversational. Um, and the other thing that when you were sharing with us the, was the na- the you know the chemical name or the molecular name of CoQ10, which was, you said ubiquinol and ubiquinone, correct? Correct. Well, I could not, I could not help but you see the word ubiquitous within there in the prefix. And ubiquitous is something that's supposed to be everywhere. So it really sounds like CoQ10 is something that's supposed to be everywhere in your body. Um, and, it, and I guess, and I guess the, the, the OL or the ubiquinol is a kind of an alcohol form of it based on its prefix. The own, I'm not quite as sure about, so I won't try and show off there. But so again, you address it. Obviously something that's supposed to be everywhere in your body, every, that should be ubiquitous, when this should be, and that's CoQ10, statins remove or severely deplete the, this ubiquitous molecule that is very necessary for good health. Is that correct? Yes. The CoQ10 has that fatty kind of structure to it that goes to protect all of your nervous structures, all of your muscle structure, you know, the, the muscle cells. It's in down to the nitty gritty in all of those little tiny, um, you know, human structures and when the statins strip out the cholesterol fatty part it also has an affinity to strip out you know the ubiquinol um, type because it's in similar family mm-hmm. and so that one goes to mm-hmm. and that's what that's exactly right well thank you joanne i i this was again this is our little pilot true vision of peace tv or tvop tv segment um, keeping very focused on one small portion of a very big picture of health and and the uh, the interesting relationship that the medical industry has with our health. So I'd like to thank you, Joanne, for giving us our first episode and being with us. And of course, I'll see you tomorrow at our symposium. I hope you will know about the True Vision of Peace symposium. If not, you can go to our True Vision of Peace website and look on it under seven seminars and webinars. We invite you to join our family. Thank you again, um, Joanne. Thank you all. God bless. And please know I love you and I know Joanne loves you because that's why we're working together to bring the love and, and bring humanity to another level. Thank you for being with us.